Hello and welcome to today's episode of Mini Discoveries. I've taken the opportunity to bring the world's heaviest chair outside because I am fed up of indoors. It is bad and I don't like it. Also, it's going to allow us to indulge today's topic, which is the sound of spring. Just how much of that sound you can hear via this microphone is unclear. If this is entirely traffic noises or noisy neighbours, then we will abandon this and record it somewhere else in there. I did have some specific examples of sounds to listen out for I wanted you to go and search for, but just sitting here, we can hear all sorts of bird song. I can hear the sort of pew 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 of a green finch. Coal tits visiting the feeder that have a sort of seesaw, 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 which is slightly different from the more metallic, louder, angrier, great tit noise, which is teacher, teacher, teacher. So yes, sounds of spring. First one, obviously bird song, but specifically the dunnock. Beautiful photo of a dunnock here by Naomi. Thank you very much for that. Shown here in their typical little kind of behavioral mode of skulking around in the undergrowth. Dunnocks are often found solitary, alone. Dunnocks will sing their hearts out. They will find a high perch when they're trying to claim a territory and attract a mate and sing out this really high-pitched song quite fast, quite short. I always imagine it as if they're trying to screw in a really squeaky screw. And then pause and then does it again. Gosh, it's a good job I'm not broadcasting these impressions over YouTube. That would be bad. The next sound to listen out for in spring is not a vocalization, it is a kind of percussion noise. This is the woodpecker. Specifically around the York area, it's the great spotted woodpecker. This is the time of year when males are trying to claim a territory and attract mates, and they do this not by singing, but by smacking their beak against the right piece of wood that resonates enough to give this loud drumming sound. They've got a special arrangement and structure of bones and air pockets inside their head that acts as a natural shock absorber to stop them knocking themselves out or giving themselves any sort of injury. The final thing to look out for, I'm not necessarily sure if it is a sign of spring, well it's not, it can be a sign of winter, but it's a sub song. So a sub song is a bit like a much simpler practice version of the song that birds would sing during the breeding season. It's often sung by juveniles, but it can also be sung by adults who are practicing outside of the breeding season. Certainly in December, when we managed to squeeze in some actual in-person Discover Nature sessions, we heard a couple of robins practicing a sub song quite, quite quiet, like they're sort of mumbling to themselves or whistling to themselves. And most recently I caught Beaky, the male blackbird, singing away, well, maybe not quite away, but certainly doing his sub song in that bush off screen. So there we have it, sounds of spring to listen out for. Hopefully you have heard some of these and I haven't had to re-record the entire thing. But I guess if I'm looking quite annoyed and angry on screen, I probably have. That's all for this week. I urge you to go out on your socially distant walks and listen, see what you can hear and do kind of tweet St. Nick's with any pictures or even little mini videos of what you find on your travels. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.